Can we explain piled foundation design in under 5 minutes? Let's find out. What are piled foundations? If you take a cross section through any major city, you would see thousands of piles under the major buildings. Piled foundation are required under big, heavy structures, where the building is too heavy to sit on top of the regular ground. Piles spread the load of these buildings into deeper and stronger layers of the soil and help stabilize the building. Otherwise, they could end up looking like this. So, how do piles work? Piled foundations transfer load in two ways. And bearing piles terminate at a hard, strong layer of soil. The pile cannot settle to activate any friction with the surrounding soil and therefore the entire load is transferred into the base. Skin friction piles allow the pile to settle, meaning that the pile transfers loading via friction into the surrounding soil. There are two major types of piled foundations. Board piles and driven piles. Let's look at board piles first. First of all, board pile installation uses a drilling rig to drill a steel casing into the earth. After this, the earth is excavated from within the steel casing. Extra steel casings are attached onto the existing steel casings already drilled into the earth and the entire assembly is drilled to a greater depth. For deep board foundations the board pile excavator must be able to reach to the termination depth. The termination depth is the pile design length. Civils.ai can be used to estimate this length. After the termination depth is reached, the reinforcement needed as per the pile design is lowered into the steel casing. Concrete is then poured using a tremie to the base of the piled foundation. After the concrete is fully poured and before it has reached its full strength, the steel casing is removed. This process is repeated for all the piled foundations required in the group. Driven piled foundations are installed differently to board piled foundations. Driven piled foundations are installed using a pile driving rig. This rig either vibrates or hammers the piles into the ground. This means that driven piles can only be installed into soft ground. Typically driven piles are made out of steel. Their geometry is commonly a H section. The profile of the H section means that these piles mainly act in friction and provide little end resistance. Civils.ai can analyze piles for us. Here, we can input our pile type as either board or driven. We can enter the geometry as the diameter or depth of the pile section. Next up, you can enter both a permanent or a variable load. Or you can let us estimate a building load for you, using number of floors and pile spacing. You can enter the soil properties in the area of the piled foundation and adjust whether the soil behavior is drained or undrained. You can add or remove soil layers using these buttons. Finally you can hit analyze or the enter key to generate results. In your results we provide the estimated pile length and the soil layer in which the pile is terminating. Let's see how pile capacity is calculated starting with piles in undrained ground, for example clays. Pile capacity can be estimated using skin friction, acting on the pile length and the bearing of the base of the pile. A short pile, of 3 meters, can be used to support a foundation in rock that is 2 meters below the surface. In this case the capacity is predominantly end bearing. Pile cap is essentially a reinforced concrete deep beam which transfers column load into piles. So, now we'll use a simple formula to determine the ultimate pile capacity in undrained soils. AB is the area of base. AP is the surface area of shaft. SUA is the shear strength of soil around the shaft. This can vary and can be summed in discrete lengths based on site investigation data. SUB is undrained shear strength of soil at the base of the shaft. NC is bearing coefficient, commonly 9. Alpha is the adhesion factor, commonly 0.45 in the absence of data. Let's now look at how we can calculate bearing capacity in granular drain soils, such as sand. Bearing capacity is once again the sum of the skin friction acting on the pile length and the end bearing pressure. QS is skin friction per meter squared of surface area. This is calculated using the friction coefficient K, the drained vertical stress and the friction angle. The end bearing pressure is calculated using the Terzaghi method. A link to a video on this method is included in the description below. The skin friction is multiplied by the pile surface area and the end bearing pressure is multiplied by the pile base area. These elements are then summed to find total bearing capacity. We can see using Sibbles.ai that max skin friction and the potential base resistance for each soil layer is being calculated. The analysis works by iterating through the soil one meter at a time, 
until a sufficient depth is reached. The minimum depth is reached when the end bearing, plus skin friction, exceed the design load. The estimate follows the Eurocode. The minimum depth is the worst case of design approach 1 combination 1 and design approach 2. Discover more at www.civils.ai.